VMI stands for Vendor Managed Inventory. And this is something that um, has become very popular with the advent of computer systems and ERP, uh, Enterprise Resource Planning Systems. Um, you also have MRPs, which is Material Resource Planning. Uh, sometimes I hear it called Manufacturing Report, Resource Planning. planning. Um, they're both valid. In this case, what, what we do is the vendor controls the entire chain by telling everybody in this chain what they need to do. Um, so in this case, you've got four um, entities. I've got distribution warehouse distributor. Obviously, I got distribution twice. Um, you could you can put uh, the the first block is supposed to be ma manufacturer. So so you have the manufacturer, the warehouse, the distributor, and the retailer, and the vendor, which is the person at the end, the retailer says uh, basically determines how much product will be in the pipeline at one time. Um, we're going to talk about make to stock and make to order contracts. So this is a very important concept within this regard because the type of contracts that you create with these entities is going to determine the ability of the vendor to encourage these groups to place materials in the system. As you, as you can see, this requires a lot of trust on everyone's, everyone's uh, part. As you can see from the bottom, VMI reduces consumption reporting time. So one of the problems in, the, in a normal supply chain is that the feedback gets delayed the more people are in the middle of the feedback chain. If you have to get information from the retailer to manufacturing, in a traditional system, it has to go from the retailer to the distributor to the warehouse to the manufacturer. And each of these things, each of these has bias because each person can change it to fit their own needs. They may do a little bit of uh, panic buying, quote unquote. We're going to talk about this a little bit more in, in the bullwhip effect as we go in think like week eight. So just keep that in mind. What this does is this provides an immediate and it and yeah sorry an immediate reporting of consumption of the product because the vendor as soon as the vendor gets the consumption data it's shared with all entities so that all entities will understand now in this scenario it also when it's shared it it also comes with a demand from the vendor to meet certain demand so just keep that in mind so there are several advantages of VMI and they're all listed here. So it reduces the number of purchasing, inspection, and storage functions. As I said, the feedback loop is delayed for every leg in the system that gets this information. Well, <clears throat> each, of these, each of these little entities has purchasing, inspection, and storage functions. We can wipe all that out by basically shortening the, shortening the distance um, virtually. Uh, sometimes you'll hear this call a virtual vendor management or or or, or a virtual management system, um, and that's why they say it. So um, the supplier gets visibility on the rate the product is being consumed. Um, this allows the supplier to 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 better schedule its capacity. Um, it also gives the retailer visibility on the supplier's ability to replenish the stock. In theory, this allows the retailer to see if any problems are on the horizon. Now, in the case of Walmart, as you're going to see, I believe some of the reading for the, during the week will talk about Walmart. Walmart uses this as a cudgel to force suppliers into certain performance standards. And in this case, a lot of suppliers do not like that because they don't like to give up control of of their own operations. In VMI, the vendor gets a certain level of control over how you perform, how you create your products. So um, it allows suppliers to prioritize shipments better, which reduces bulk buying tendencies. Demand smoothing strategies work much better for this. 
because you know the entire chain. Um, if, if everyone works together in a VMI where everyone is an equal partner, this is very good. As you're going to see, it doesn't always work out that way. But nonetheless, if an optimal VMI does that. So, um, as I as mentioned earlier, it virtually shortens the supply chain. And you get frequent communication of, of all the information that goes through all of the entities. So inventory level, stock shortages, plan promotions, which allows everyone to increase control over discount levels and their effects. This is important because once again, if you have delays in your feedback for your forecasting, you, you introduce variation in your forecasting. And it allows for even more allocation of inventory. Or, uh, sorry, more even allocation of inventory. In my classes, I always get these arguments about whether or not VMI is a good system for everyone involved. And in, in, in the case of Walmart, it especially comes up, some students say that, yeah, Walmart has a right to beat suppliers into providing certain levels of inventory. Um, Boeing tried this when they did their just in time with triple with a triple seven when I worked at Boeing early in the triple sevens rollout and Boeing would basically say, yeah, I want, they would force just in time. So that basically there was no lead time. They'd say, you know, we want so much product as whenever I order it. But what would happen is the manufacturers, they won't come out and say, Hey, I'm going to have a problems meeting this demand um, because manufacturers keep that information close to the vest. Instead, they will continue to provide the product without giving warning signals that, that their capacity is being stretched beyond its capacity. So what Boeing suddenly began to see was people that were saying, yeah, I'll give you a thousand units next month. Yeah, a thousand units. All of a sudden, we're pumping out low quality products and eventually weren't able to keep up with demand. So suddenly they started to see all these problems in their VMI system because they, they erroneously thought, well, I can see everything. Everyone's working as a team. As long as I tell them what I need, we'll be fine. But in a VMI, you don't have perfect information. You only have the information that's in your ERP or your MRP or, or that's being reported. So keep that in mind if you're in a VMI. You still need to go through the, go through the whole efforts of having a relationship with people. You know, um, I found that when I was in a supplier quality supply chain role that um, just talking to suppliers made them feel comfortable about sharing your information actually can in some cases go further than actually having this big electronic system. So just keep that in mind. A VMI is not perfect, but it's, it's a good tool though. You know, to be fair, it's VMI is a very good when everyone, um, VMI is more effective the more people play on the same page which leads us to the weaknesses of a VMI. Um, once again, uh, this is very important. What happens is VMI stresses the relationships between entities within a VMI based upon how aggressively a VMI is used. So in the case of Walmart, you may have um, distributors, suddenly they'll, they'll lose control over their, their distribution. In some cases, like we've seen, people may feel that distributors are useless. And I've seen some arguments, some, some students say, well, why have a distributor? You know, a, a distributor's role is lessened in a VMI. I was lucky enough in this last conference that I went to, to bump into a few distributors. Um, and they're, they're part of a dis, dis, distributor coalition out of Texas. And I, I learned a lot of really interesting things. The bottom line is distributors are starting to change their role based upon what they provide to customers. They no longer just move parts around to, 
to customers. They actually have a more integrated role. Um, and VMI is a big reason for this. I'll go into this in, in, in a later class. I, I'm, I'm not going to delay this now. But just realize that when you force a VMI on people, people will resist it. Um, for instance, marketing suddenly no longer has the ability to get re rewards and incentives for moving certain stock. Because now we have better understanding of the demand, you won't have excess inventory for marketing to be encouraged to sell stock. So marketing, marketing tends not like VMI because of the incentive structures that marketing works under. So when you use VMI, you need to change the, mark, the incentive structures for, for, your, for your marketing team. So now, when you run VMI, there is a desire, like within Walmart, to keep inventories low which is valid, you know. Um, if you have less variation of demand and you have good capacity, you don't need to worry about huge inventories. Well, store owners especially, if you're Walmart and you know that there's a big season coming up and you don't see a lot of inventory on the shelf, you really trust your suppliers to produce products within a low lead time. So you may have your, your stores may fear a lack of having enough inventory. So they may bulk order more. They may panic buy, which injects oscillations within your demand in your supply chain. So realize that VMI, although it does work as a very good tool to reduce inventories across the supply chain, human nature can still take effect. And as I said here, distributors lose control over their distribution because the distribution levels are set by the customer, not by the distributor. Um, distributors are now working with multiple customers now, so they're able to spread their distribution over more items, over more customers, but still, they still lose control over the distribution. So distributors aren't very comfortable with the system. And inefficient modeling can produce inventory shortages. Like I said before, if you have a model where you think you're going to get a good supply in a short lead time, but you haven't done your due diligence to make sure that the, your supplier can actually do it and, it's just, and, and isn't just giving you these numbers, you may be setting yourself up for failure. So keep this in mind. With that in mind, this is the last slide.